Hello, hello? Hello. What's up, man? Can I can hear you. How you doing? How you... All right, awesome. We're doing good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Doing great. Can't Sweet. complain. Um, I'm, I'm fucking, dude, I'm fucking ready for a coaching lesson. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, so uh, I, I always ask everybody this, but uh, just to give me a reference, and it also makes it easier for if anyone, if you ever, I mean, it doesn't really matter to you, but if people rewatch this as well to kind of learn from it, yeah. what league are you and what race are you? And uh, you don't have to give me a super thorough ex explanation of how you play, just kind of like a generalization of like what builds you enjoy doing or like a, a build you like. Cool. Um, yeah, so I'm a Diamond 3 Protoss. Um, I've kind of been trying to follow like your Bonsa GM guide, so kind of like a more macro, sort of, you know, reactive style. I really like Skytop, but I can get to it in a game. Um, so yeah. So it's you like the Sky Toss? Now, yeah, yeah. I have a question. Uh, so do I, but I have a question for you. Do you like just to rush Sky Toss, or do you like being the guy who does Sky Toss as a transition? Um, I would like to rush it if I could handle it. It must I, I just do it as transition. Um, but no, I don't. I don't have a good way to rush through it. I think. Yeah, uh, that, was, that was a trick question. So. There is no good way to rush it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, okay, so. that's good to know. Good to know. <laughs> no, I've uh, so I've actually coached a few. Like there are a lot of Protosses that love Sky Toss. And they just like rushing it right away. But it it definitely uh uh it definitely has this thing where it's uh fucking what's it called. It's it's kind of like a risk because if your opponent doesn't know how to punish it, it'll it, like you know you can get away with it. But if your opponent knows how to punish it and you just rush it, you have no control and it's really hard to do against better players. So in diamond it could work, but if you get to like upper masters, it'd probably become really tough. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Anyways, uh, what matchup do you want to focus on mostly today? Do you think? Uh, PVP. Sorry, PVP. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sounds good. Uh, PvP. Uh, P I actually, you know what's crazy? I think this is gonna probably be one of my first PvP coaching lessons, and I fucking love that matchup. So I'm uh, I'm actually surprised because everyone always wants like PVZ, all the time. Uh, but uh, dude, uh, that one's usually okay. That one. I mean, if I you know, if Skytoss, I think it's gonna be the best PvP, right? So that one usually works out. So. Yeah. All right. So uh, I guess next question is: Is are you on Battle.net already? Yeah, I, I have a StarCraft. Oh, okay, so just all you gotta do <clears throat> to get me easy here, because the chat system in StarCraft 2 is fucking awful. Uh, left click your portrait top in top right, your little avatar, and then when you okay. open up when you open up your profile, hit ladders on the left side, and then the exact same spot, hit Grandmaster, drop it down to rank 112 at the moment, and then you can send me a message that way directly. And then I can, so once I actually have you, I can uh, there you go, perfect. We can make a party. I'll, I'll make you lead, and now <clears throat> my next question would be, do you want to check out some, do you have like replays on hand already that you want to check out that you think you want to like improve on, or do you want to create a build for you uh, in a way that, you know, we can discuss the style, see if you like it, and then we can create something for you that suits that style? Yeah, so I do have a replay in mind, so maybe we can do okay. Yeah, 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 sure, let's do it, let's jump into it. I'll just help you improve, like, because I can help you improve upon an existing style you already do. Uh, it's just like if, if you were the kind of guy that had literally no idea what you wanted to do, and you were just like, uh, "I'm vibe, I'm clay, mold me." <laughs> I feel like okay, let's do it. But either way, it, it works. All right. So uh, feel free as well at any point in time if I'm like mid sentence and you really want to say something, you don't even worry, don't hesitate. You can interrupt me and you can ask the question, and I'll. I'll try to answer as much stuff for you as I can because I obviously want you to learn as much as you possibly can. But okay, cool. I'll definitely uh, check out and see what you're doing. In general, <clears throat> I'm actually going to speed through this really fast only because I want to see how your build kind of opens so I can get an sure. idea before I really start critiquing you. Our probes are under attack. Yeah, like already, your build looks very risky. Uh, but I, but here's the thing though, your build's okay actually for platinum and below. I think once you get to diamond league, this build, and I'm this honestly might have been something I was doing a beta GM series, but as I progressed, I realized how much easier it is if you just open safer, uh, you know, with Protoss. Like in diamond league, it, so we'll discuss how to do that. 
But uh, yeah, your build already, from what I saw just now, super risky. So it's very good in platinum and below, but once you get to like the point of where people will be aggressive, it's really risky. Now let's let's go. Because the nexus is coming down too fast. Or? Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> one gate expands okay. in PvP are extremely risky, and the only way they actually make sense is if you go one gate expand into a uh, really 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 fast robo. But even then, you're super vulnerable to like stargate pressure. So, because okay. like if it's like phoenix pressure, they could just lift up your mortals and they could kill you. And if it's uh, if it's oracle pressure, you don't have enough stalkers to like stop them from killing your probes. So it's just super risky, is all it is. So you, like, if you actually do go one gate, expand, you have to go for like a really quick robo, and then a really quick stargate, and go immortal phoenix. It's really weird. Anyways. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not attached to one gate skin, so it's probably safer. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it definitely makes your life harder. If you, if, but instead, we'll, we'll talk about what I think is really good now. Uh, what I think you could be doing. So. Yeah, okay. I'll say this. I don't mind that you're building a wall, like your pylon as part of the wall on the ramp. I actually think I should start doing this more often myself because it allows you to get a little bit of a, of a pylon field on the low ground. So you could do something like make a battery, for instance. Like you could probably fit a battery on the edge of the ramp on the left side, which is nice. But if you do this, you kind of fucked up where you put the gateway now as well. So here's what you should do with the gateway when you do this, uh, in my opinion. You should actually space it to where... The uh, um, the the gateway is like to the right, and uh, like if you put the gateway all the way to the to the right side of where it is now, like on the top part of the ramp, and then you build another gateway below that, and you leave the the gap between the pylon and the gateway. That would, <clears throat> I mean, it's still not the worst the way it is right now. Mm -hmm. the, only, the only thing I think is scary here is that, I mean, your pylon. I guess, I don't know. Your pylon is part of the wall, but it, it still works because you can put another pylon there. It just seems awkward. Uh, yeah, it does. I mean, that pylon ends up being going over when it sometimes, like, if it dies, as much as stuff. I mean, obviously, it's normal. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't, well, the style I'm going to kind of recommend for you to do, I don't, like, I'm going to, how I'm going to kind of, because the way I saw you opening was you're going defensive expand, so, and you're going to go stalker sentry. So, it's <laughs> not like, your, your pylon should never die. Be only because the the only time it would die is if you were getting proxy like four gated by zealots or if you were getting cannon rushed, then it's gonna probably die, uh, which makes it a little scary. But in general, uh, the pylon, uh, like against standard builds that are just like you know like your opponent's not doing some like one base proxy all in, your pylon will never die just because you have control of the low ground because you have stalkers, so that it's okay. I guess it's not it's not that bad. I don't know. It just it looks a little weird to me the way the gateway's placed, but it still works because you can it, the the reason why this is important is because all you want to have is you want to make sure you have uh a, like a little gap that you can cover with a, like a new building if adepts show up. And that's something we're going to talk about in a little bit. It's very it's like ridiculously important in this matchup in the early game because if anyone opens up double adept against you and you don't do what, what we'll talk about, you just die. Okay. Like double, double adepts are kind of ridiculous in this matchup for openers, but they're so easily countered if you do the right thing. <clears throat> so, all right, your, I would say this: gas, like your well, uh, building placement aside, it, it can still work. It's fine. Your gas is a bit late now already, like quite a bit late. You want your gas to be started right as like within the timing of the first probe after you make the gateway. So you want to make your gateway, and then you make a probe right away. But then you make the gas before you even start another probe because you, if you time it well, like you know, like if if your build's not for some reason really awkwardly paced, which, which it shouldn't be because there's nothing really going on right now. But what you you should be able to actually afford making another probe in queue, bef like before the probe finishes, and you already have a gas started. Getting double gas started really fast in PvP is ridiculously important. Like you're actually gonna go double gas expand in PvP now. So if you single gas expand, that's where the risk comes in like heavily. And then, like, right now, what I would highly recommend, too, is your first Chrono Boost just finished. You immediately, like, well, obviously you can't do it yet because you're still waiting. But you pretty much, as soon as you can afford it, you make a second Chrono Boost right away. Because you want to, what you want is you want to be able to saturate both gases super fast. Uh, because, it's, you know, that's the okay. only way you're really going to have control in this matchup. Are 
There you go. Yeah, I didn't know about finding the second one. Yeah, like I'm glad you. I'm actually really glad you started your second gas, but you definitely got to be doing that second chrono really, really fast because if you started the second chrono right after the first one, ideally, what's going to be happening is, is and I'll, we're going to talk about your gateway as well in just a second. But ideally, what you want to have happening here is you're going to be chrono boosting your probes out so fast that as your gases finish. You're almost able to like you're you're able to saturate them with like two out of three, and then you finish off that third out of like three out of three at the last with the last probe that spawns. Like, you want these gases saturated fast, uh, and your gateway timing should be something like this. Your first gateway th is thrown down obviously right after the pylon. Your second gateway is thrown down when your when your first gateway is like sixty percent of the way done, like fifty to sixty percent. So if you get over there, because the gateway has like a, a 46 second build time. If you build the second gateway, when the first gateway is somewhere between like 23, 23 seconds to like 30, that's perfect. It's somewhere in there. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact, because if, even if it's slightly early, well, 23 is slightly early by the way. But the thing is, is if you wait till about 23 to 30, anywhere in that range, you're not going to have money problems. So it doesn't matter if it's slightly early, it's totally fine. Because uh, you'll be able to afford it then while still cranking out probes and you're not going to be like shit I don't have any money now um, So you, you want to make your second gateway right around then and the reason why this makes sense is because you want this uh, gateway has a longer build time than a core and You want your both gateways to be finished right around the time when the core finishes uh, Like the second gateway and the core to finish right around the same time so that you can now start double unit production right away uh, And this is going to be crucial and how you develop the early game in this matchup. And then okay. the only way you can really afford this too properly is if you go for a uh, double chrono boost on your Nexus with the second gas. Because you can see how your second gas is done now. And it's it's going to be, you know, chilling for a little while. Because it's the reason why is because you're going for a one get expand. And, yeah. Alright, and then... Uh... Okay, uh, we'll keep going. Um, oh, actually, I'll pause it really fast and say this. So, you don't actually send your probe down to from now on. And again, I know you're going for one gate expands, but in general, don't actually send your probe down to expand until you're ready to make your third pylon. So, this is obviously your second pylon. Uh, but what I'm going to have you do in the future <clears throat> is your first pylon can be near the ramp, uh, however you want to set it up, uh, just as long as you have the wall that you can block adepts out with. That's really what's most important. And this wall can still do that. Uh, next thing is your second pylon. Build that shit with one of your gas probes and build it directly next to your nexus. Like try to try to not like block your resources much with it, but like build it close to the nexus. And the reason why you want it close to the nexus is because the second pylon is you, what you want it where you want it to be is you want it to be able to be within range to put a battery in your mineral line if you have to. Like at your main base. So like you want and you want that battery as centralized as it can possibly be. So I'd say a great place to put the pylon would be just to the north of the probes mining the top gas or just to the right of the probes mining the bottom gas. Like just barely. So okay. if if you were if you were ever watching this VOD, it would be like uh, where I'm, I'm making a green box like indicator, It'd be like right there or it would be like right there or like right right, right here roughly. Just and the reason why is cuz uh yeah, like if you can put a, if like where that red circle is for your like tattoo on the side of the nexus. If you put a pile, or if, sorry, if you can put a shield battery like right there, that's like perfect, perfect place for that battery. If if this guy were to do something like, for instance, an oracle pressure, like proxy oracle or something like that, suddenly that shield battery is gonna just be amazing for you. So the second pylon placement should always be next to the nexus, and then the yeah, third pylon always goes down before the nexus at your natural, so that you can actually do a safe opening. And I'm gonna teach you a safe opening, which will be. I'll have you open Stalker Sentry and then just go Stalker after that. So you're, you're going to be needing an early battery to make this work. Okay. And then the probes actually stop making for a little bit because you made a Nexus. Uh, and then what I would recommend too, uh, only be like this is how I'll have your strategy go, okay? So you're going to open up. What you'll do is you'll open up with... Uh, you get, what, I, what I want your build to be is I want it to be a two gate opener. I want it to go stalker sentry instead of what it is now. And then what I'm going to have you do with your probe 
Yeah, that, that once like we're talking about like your twenty third probe. Okay, this is the probe that runs down to your natural because you're already fully saturated on the mineral line and you're already fully saturated on both gases. Probe number twenty three is the last probe. Actually, sorry, you're gonna actually go to twenty four probes. So let me let me I'll explain what they do. Probe twenty three, which is the first probe after you are fully saturated. What you can do with this probe, you can send it down to your natural. You can build a pylon just like how you did at your natural, but this will be pylon three. This will allow you to not supply block uh, after you start your double gateway units. Then after you build that pylon, run across the map with that probe and go check his natural, okay? Probe 24 can come down the ramp again, and then you stop making probes after 24 for a moment. Probe 24 will come down the ramp, and it will build the nexus, and then it will sit in the doorway of where the pylon and the gateway are, like in the open door, so like where units can walk in and out of your base. And it sits in the doorway. Uh, preferably on the side that's like inside your base, not on the side of the ramp. And what happens now is when you make units, um, when you make units out of your gateways, you can have your units in front of your base, in front of your natural. It gives you time to react to an adept. And then if it is an adept, you, build, you always build a shield battery with this probe to block your fucking base off. This is, this is like required in this matchup. If you don't do this, you will lose so many games because so many fucking people are like double adept pressure, even chrono boosting it. Like it's ridiculous. It's so, and then if they, if they get in your base, it's like guaranteed you're gonna lose about seven probes or like six probes. It's just stupid. It's game ending. So that's how you'll do it. Uh, so again, tw probe twenty three builds the pylon, goes across the map. Probe twenty four, you can build a nexus, and you actually could even build a shield battery, and then you sit in the ramp, and you just wait in the doorway, and you you wait until you figure out what he's doing. Uh, yo, Mr. Lama, thank you very much for the raid, dude. What's up, everybody? Welcome. I'm doing a coaching lesson, guys, but I appreciate you very much, man. Guys, go check, go click his fucking name. Click Mr. Lama, go watch his stream as well. Guy's a fucking badass. Oh, uh, yeah. much love, dude. I appreciate you. All right, uh, so, sorry, um, so you'd, yeah, you'd want to have, uh, the battery be able, being able to be placed to be blocked off and not allow you to get killed by adepts, but then... Really what it comes down to is seeing how early your opponent expands compared to how early you expand, and that's it. And if your opponent does not expand, okay, we're talking like if you do the build we just talked the way we just talked about, and you're like, Alright, I have a uh, a Nexus at you know, my Nexus is like let's talk about like let's say it's like a third of the way done. Your Nexus is like twenty four seconds of the way to completion. So you, you don't have to even like mouse over the timer. You just in get an indicator with the health bar on top of the building. You're like, all right, that looks like about a third. You look at your opponent's nexus, and if it's, like, just started, or if it's uh, not even started at all, if it's just behind your nexus, that is definitely the time where you go, you know what? Let's keep this probe here, and let's let's be ready. I don't know. Let, like, you know, I, my, it could be adepts, unless you've already confirmed that it's not adepts because stalkers maybe are killing your probe or something uh, that's scouting. But if the possibility of adepts is always more prevalent, the later he expands and the longer he like just deviates from economy so because then he could be going for like double gate like stargate or some shit like that and he's like chronoing out adepts and things like this like this could definitely be damaging to you so that's cr that's critical that's definitely massive about how you know you know what to expect but uh if you see an opponent who either expands as fast as you did or maybe even faster than you did with the build we're talking about still leave that probe there but i would say that is an indicator that you can then resume probe production to, to not die. Uh, so this am I starting with two probes then? No, uh, one, one, one. Uh, Only one. Probe and oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, you know what? You know what? Sorry. You're actually correct. Uh, okay. Now, you're, you're not wrong, okay? So, let's let's, let's uh, take it back a second. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I fact, totally fact, forgot about the gateway scout. Uh, okay, so yeah, actually, here's, here's the new thing, okay? New plan. Probe 23. <laughs> probe 23. Does what I said Probe 24 does. Probe 23 is Pylon Boy, uh, Nexus Guy, and he sits there and waits to build the battery in, in your doorway if Adepts ever show up. You still always need a probe doing this, okay? Okay. But when you, the scouting probe is actually going to be the probe that builds gateway number two. Not gateway number one, gateway number two. That is actually okay. true. So I, I, yeah, and then the probe can stay across the map until you expand, and then once you confirm what's going on, then then you're good then it's okay uh okay. 
So actually, yeah, uh, my bad. Um, yeah, you're right. So your your second probe will be scouting. Honestly, about we'll go back to it right when it should be scouting. A little bit further. So right, like you should be having a gas already started right now. You should be currently missing your probes like you are. Get probes should be getting made for the gases. Honestly, pro about like right now, like about probe eighteen. So when you go to like 19 supply, you could, as you're on 18 supply, you could literally rally your nexus towards your, towards your gateway. And then you could go build a second gateway in your doorway right now as it gets there. And that would be in the perfect time frame between 23 to 30. And you could then send this probe across the map. This, th this is a good scout as well, because there is nothing that can happen to you fast enough. If you, cause again, I, I do, I, I, you did scout early and I like that. And we, we're going to talk about that eventually, but yeah, uh, if your probe leaves the, your base now after building a gateway, it's still totally fine in PvP. Nothing's going to kill you because the only thing that is really scary is a cannon rush or a uh, either a cannon rush or a zealot proxy. But the, the thing is, is if it is one of those things, all you have to do to beat it is wall your base off and make stalkers. That's the only that's literally all you have to do to beat that is kill. What if it's a cannon rush, kill the probe in your base, but still always wall your base off. If you kill the probe in your base and make stalkers, you're fine. If it's a zealot all in, you just wall your base off, make stalkers. And as long as you can get to a certain amount of stalkers, we're talking like, you know, like four or something. If you can just get your stalker count up a bit, you're fine. Uh, because like stalkers are just amazing at defending all these different types of cheese. Uh, what if you can just get to them and walling your base off will definitely help you get there. Uh, that is something though that I would say just to, just to, I want to make sure you understand this though. Just know this point. Okay. If you run into a lot of players that do, uh, like, proxies, you're like, God, everybody proxies. It's just cannon rush, cannon rush, cannon rush, proxy zealots, proxy zealots, cannon rush. If it starts getting ridiculous, get out of the habit of having a pylon in your wall, okay? Stop doing that okay. if, if it starts happening a lot. Because if it starts happening a lot, the way you can fix it is, like, you'll still have, you still will have one pylon in your wall always. It's unavoidable. But the way your build is right now, you're gonna have two pylons in your wall, and it's gonna be a lot harder to fix this. Because at least if you only if at least if you only have one pylon in your wall, what you can do, because if you'd have two gateways in the wall instead, what you can do then is you could build a second pylon in the doorway. Uh, that's being that you know where only like one or two zealots can hit it, but then you can put like a third gateway behind it. Like as the zealots are breaking down the, the wall, if it's zealots or something like this. If it's cannons, it, it won't really be necessary. Uh, but if it's zealots, for sure, you could just like fill in the wall behind it as he tries to kill the pylon. But if you have two pylons, it's it's way too vulnerable of a wall. So just know that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you if you're under that shit a lot, that's definitely what you should do. But yeah, if you, if you scout with the probe right now, that like 18 probe, uh, you build a second gateway. That probe goes across the map and scouts. That'd be perfect. Uh, and then you could because you could go in it, into his base initially, and we'll actually talk about that really fast. I did want to come back to this in a second, but check this out. Okay, look at his nexus. What do you see on his nexus? So he kind of boosted one time, I guess. Or no, he kind of boosted twice. Exactly. Yep. So the fact that he currently boosted twice, this is something. Uh, this is something that's very, re very real in this matchup. And if you pay attention to that chrono boost every single game, it's going to tell you a lot of things. Now, uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. But I'm going to tell you one thing now and also to pay attention to, which is obviously what does your opponent have in general at his base? This, if it's like a forge, okay, yeah, no, it's cannon rush. If it's literally nothing, you might be like, okay, he might be proxy gating me at this point, obviously. If you scout deeper in, after you see nothing or you see a forge, like if you see a forge, it's obviously a cannon rush. But if you see nothing in his base and you scout deeper in and you go, well, I have double gas, he has no gas. Even before you see the gateways, if, if you know if you haven't seen them yet, make a fucking wall, wall yourself into your base. Literally wall yourself in because you are about to be zealot all in. That is what that means. Uh, and then it, don't like so the, the the triggers definitely would be if you see nothing, you definitely would be like okay, wall myself in and make that core as fast as possible. Because if you don't make that core either, you kind of skip it. It's gonna delay your stalkers, and stalkers are really how you're gonna not die here. Uh, so you definitely need to do the both of those things like ASAP. But if you see, you know, what this looks like where he's got a gate, you see a nexus with no chrono boost energy, and you see gas, it's very standard. It means he's making probes. The other thing you could see, now this is the thing we're talking about with the chrono boost. The other thing that could be is if he's, if you see double gas, you see gateway, you see pylon, it all looks really standard, but he's not spinning any chrono boost. He's got either as much as you do right now, 
or he hasn't spent a single one and he has 115. If he has the higher the chrono boost is, the more likely he's going to go for really fast tech. The less chrono boost he has, the more likely he's going to go for a really fast expand. That is an easy ass way to read Protoss. Uh, everybody does it. It makes and the reason why is because it makes a lot of sense. If you're gonna just rush your tech and you're not gonna have any priority to like, you know, like make probes really fast because you want to like oversaturate a main base and then take a natural, it's not a big deal. If you don't have optimal mineral saturation and you just instead optimize gas because you're going to go for like a tech building which is expensive on gas and you're going to chrono boost out that tech unit whether it be an immortal or a, a void ray or something like that. So higher chrono boost definitely correlates to fast rushes with tech. Um, and then yeah, and then you can just expect that. So always expect aggression if it's going to like it always feel like it's more likely aggression is going to be a thing if it's higher chrono. Always expect it. Uh, and then with this probe, after it's got some base like this, you can definitely leave like you just did because you just got all the information you need. And now with this, you can tell he's definitely going to be a standard. What I would love for you to do with the probe right now is literally to just like hide and wait. And the fact that he also puts a pylon here, this is another indicator. I'm, I, I don't mind that you saw this as well. This is good. This is an indicator that he's going to expand. So, so far, no chrono energy on the Nexus, and a, a pylon in front of the natural, definite indicators that he's going to now take a, na a natural here, because if he doesn't, it's just kind of awkward about how, how he does his build. Uh, another indicator that's huge, too, is he's going single gateway. Uh, now, here's a, here's a quick tip, okay? If you ever want a... This this is just something... We're not going to go super deep into this. It's pretty basic, and but it's a way you can literally get free wins versus people who play like this, okay? And this is why I'm telling you not to play like this as well. Uh, if you see someone opens up one gate expand, just like this is, the easiest way you can win the game right now is if this probe runs out of his natural, as soon as you scout everything in the main, leave, go down to like maybe his third base with the probe, build a pylon, and the second your core is done, build a robo, and build two more gateways. I don't give a shit where you build those gates. Probably build one of those gates at your next to your robo, and build one of those gates next to your main gate in your main base. Because so, you, only, you only need one proxied gateway to have a fast pylon. And you could literally go three warp gate with robo. And from that point on, do not expand. Save chrono boost now for immortals. And then just literally do an immortal soccer all in. And you, I guarantee you'll win. Every single time. It's ridiculous. Like one gate expand. I won't get expanded and I can defend that. Don't listen to chat. Chat doesn't always... That, that, the guy who said that, don't listen to him, okay? The, the, if you're reading chat right now, don't listen uh, that's not correct. Okay. Uh, so yeah, no, you, uh, you totally can kill a player going for a one get expand with a proxy robo. It's, uh, it's ridiculously fucking hard to defend it for the, uh, one get expand guy. It's insanely hard. Okay. But it, you don't have, again, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. Just know it's an option that you can abuse someone who plays like this. All right, so I know I'm talking a lot. I just want to make sure you're feeling good. So far, with everything we talked about, do you have any questions or anything not making sense? Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. Uh, and then uh, if you don't go for the, ga the gateway robo shit, that's just totally fine. What you're going to want to do then instead is your build will look... It's not, again, it's not going to look oh, exactly like this. What it will yeah. be is it'll be uh, double gateways... Can You're, I drink beer in one month then? Uh, D. Thank you very much for the subola. Hell yeah. I appreciate it, dude. Uh, what you do is uh, you have a, a stalker and a sentry out of your first two gateways. Um, that's, you know, that's that's your first thing. After that, uh, you're going to have a battery. You're going to have a nexus at the natural. And from there, you can choose how you want to play it out. If you think your opponent's going to be more aggressive probably keep flowing units out of your gateways like as fast as possible if you think your opponent's going to be more greedy like for instance if, if you see oh my opponent's doing a one gate expand and i'm not really feeling that threatened i would definitely say always no matter what make your sentry and your stalker out of your first two gates but from there you could maybe stop making units out of the gateways just for a second to maybe take like a faster robo and more probes like you can react in a way that's not as safe and it's a little bit more greedy about how you saturate your base and take your tech you know what i mean uh, so you have options. 
You definitely have options with this, and you can make it a little greedier if you want to, or you can make it a little safer if you want to. Always feel, feel like, always feel like it's okay though to play safer if you if you have to, just by simply making more stalkers. Uh, and then, but what will happen now is once you have all that, you're finally if you're not doing it all in, your probe would go back to your opponent's natural. Then you want again. This is how we were talking about the timing earlier. When your natural is about a third, when your natural is about one third. That is the perfect time to scout your opponent's natural with the probe, and this is the last time you're going to scout with a probe. So if you hit it and you're now scouting, just check and see if he expanded. And if he didn't expand, that's definitely the time to stop making probes and probably resume gateway production as fast as you can uh, and make sure you're pumping your gateways and get ready for a timing. And then, you know, while making those units out gateways, eventually make a robo. If you do see a natural, that's definitely the time where you can make probes and you're fine. But you want to confirm, so like the fact that your like the probe that was over across the map came home before it confirmed that there's an expansion. Never do this. You always want to confirm that there's an expansion. And then once you, if you do confirm there's an expansion, you can obviously go with your uh, with your sentry. You can start going into hallucinated phoenix scouts. If you confirm there is no expansion, and you're like shit, okay, he's not expanding. You can always follow up with a scout of hallucinated phoenix, but. I mean, if you have the inc the inclination to go, okay, well, now we're just going to keep making units out of the gateways because he didn't expand yet. That's going to be... The chances of holding it all in go way up now. You're going to have a much higher chance of not dying. All right, so now we're going to kind of speed through here a little bit. Uh, but that, that general opener is going to just be extremely effective. And from there... Uh, what you would do, you know, if, if we're talking about, if you're in the position we just talked about, uh, once you can actually make, so the priority would definitely be units and tech if you're getting all in. The priority would be probes and tech if you're not getting all in. But eventually, you're going to be able to do all three, which is units, probes, and tech. Uh, like, they're all going to happen eventually. So the goal then would be, no matter what avenue you take, depending on if you need to play defensive or you can play greedy, What's going to happen is, is you're going to fully saturate your natural eventually. And when this happens, you're going to be making, uh, you know, your units out of your gateway, your units out of your robo. At this point, you could then add on more gates once your natural is fully saturated. And you could then also add on a third base. So just really quickly in general, out of two styles that are very common here in PvP, which one do you think you would prefer? Would you prefer... Stalker Disruptor, which is the... I, I honestly would say that's a, the harder one to micro. Uh, or would you be the guy who would prefer Charge Lot Archon Immortal as a rotation? Charge Lot Archon Immortal. Okay. That, you want to be... Okay. Yeah, that, that's, that yeah no, that's that's totally fine. Uh, it would totally... It works great. Like, you can definitely get... To, you can honestly go pretty far with this composition in PvP. Uh, so, what we're going to do then is... If you're going to go Charge Lot Archon Immortal... You're gonna. What I want you to do is, I want you to actually becoming. I want you to start becoming a timing Protoss, and then you can take a third behind your timing. So what you'll end up doing is you'll go two gate Robo with fully saturating your natural. Once your natural is fully saturated, okay. I want you to. Uh, I'm actually gonna make you this build too, so you have a reference. But what I want you to do is, I want I want you just to do a timing with it, and then it's gonna be literally uh, like seven gateways with we're, not, we're literally going to skip your gas at your natural at first it's just going to be a fully saturated mineral line and you're going to do a timing with this and then if this timing does not kill your opponent you can fall back into a third base really easily you can then fall back into more gas and your charge lot immortal will turn into charge lot archon immortal because you'll be going up to from two to six gases uh and then you'll have a lot of gateways to be able to do this with as well so that'll be kind of uh, honestly if you do the build like this you're probably going to win most of your games through the timing. I already... Diamond League especially. I feel like if, if you do this timing, it's going to fucking destroy. And it's going to probably make you efficient with just like feeling out Protoss and how, like, how to control the game. But the second you have the, you know, this timing ready to go, definitely commit to it. We're, like You possibly will kill them. And if you do, definitely keep powering it on. But as soon as you start having extra money with the timing, you take your fourth base. That'll be the goal here. Uh... And we'll, we'll 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 talk again about this in a moment, like what or you know, towards the end of the lesson, as I give you the example, because I, I do want to do that for you. But for now, uh, we'll we'll keep talking about how you play in this game specifically. All right, so let's speed it up now a little bit. 
So yeah, like there's definitely a, I would say this, your build right now has definitely a lack of uh, follow-up scouting. Because you you only had one gate, so you're essentially was super delayed here. And you also have no battery. There's very high chances you could die to pressure right now. And then you're making adepts. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to pause it and say, uh, conceptually, honestly, don't make adepts unless you open with adepts. In my opinion. Okay. The reason why is because they have a high success rate if you rush them. If the, if your plan is to rush them, they have a high success rate, but and they also pair really well with pressure. They're not as good if you pair them with expands, because if you're, for instance, if your opponent, you, uh, let's just say this. The reason why I say they don't pair well with expands is because if you run into your opponent's base and he walls you out with the shit we're talking about, like how you have the probe on the high ground just sitting there waiting for adepts to show up and you just build like a battery. To be like, huh, you can't get in my base. If he does that to you, you can't get into his base, literally. And if he just, if your opponent just opened Stalker, non-stop Stalker, at this point in time, if you opened up Sentry, Stalker, no battery, and two Adepts, and he opens up just four Stalkers, and then his Stalkers 5 and 6 would spawn, uh, you know, to defend your Adepts as they get across the map, and then based on whatever you make out of your, next, or out of your uh, gateways here, maybe, you, you know, you have those to help reinforce here, but either my point is, is if he has more stalkers than you in PvP, he can overpower your natural until the immortals out. And if your opponent would have opened up double gateway, it's guaranteed he could have four stalkers by four minutes. Like it's for sure because your yours is pretty slow because you you made only uh, like this is when you could actually have six units instead of four. And the reason why is because you made two at once with your warp gate. But you made one by one with your first gateway. And your, your second gateway didn't really make anything until the warp gate was done. So there could be six units active right now. So there could already be four stalkers killing you while two stalkers, you know, defend the two adepts. That, that, that could honestly lose you the game because he could then overpower your natural. It fucks up everything about your build. So this is definitely risky. Uh, which is another reason why, that's again why I say if you open adepts, it makes sense. But if you go late adepts, it makes it kind of risky. And then here's another uh, massive thing, which I mean, I kind of already told you, but I'm going to just kind of clarify it. You you need a battery if you play like this. And the reason why you need a battery is because you make a sentry. The sentry has no power right now. It's the biggest crappy unit you'll ever have here. It's going to definitely be like, it's like a little kid blowing a bubble gun. It's like, okay, this isn't really a military unit. It's kind of just like there. It has utility for sure, but it's a piece of shit in terms of DPS. So it... Like, you really need that battery to compensate for the fact that you made a sentry. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to get overpowered. People people who just go mass stalkers will just run you over. <clears throat> and also, I don't really necessarily like how your stalkers are placed. I want them to be not super far out but just a little bit more to the right and up from the pylon like i want you to be a little bit out in front of your base and the reason why is because it gives you a little bit more of an indicator that uh adepts could be attacking you just like what you're doing to him so if you give yourself a little bit of vision window you're like oh okay well i can now react for an, an extra like three seconds before adepts are actually trying to go into my main base and that is the only time adepts are a problem is when they get into your main base because then they have the utility of running around everywhere like they can maximize that shade uh but if you just have your stalkers maybe like and again i'm putting a green box here for the vod if you watch this again but like basically just on the edge of your vision right now so like as as far as you can see is where you'd plant your units right now instead so you can easily fall back to a battery if it's a real push and you're not going to die but if it's a depths you can see the depths instead of where the fog of war max is right now you would basically have the fog of war max being like from the distance of the pylon to the fog, add that to the fog now. Like that, that would be now revealed vision, and your fog edge edge would be like over here, like almost near the ramp, uh, like f just further out. It would be a much further distance you could see adepts from. So it'd help a lot at being like, oh shit, let's get a probe to build a battery and not let him in my base. It helps a lot, basically. Uh, let's let, yeah, let, let's watch like your opponent right now. Like, does he do this or does he just let you into his main base? Like he's. So like in the CL, okay, so like here's the thing too. If you make adepts, if you do make adepts, never ever 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 shade backwards. Like that you're basically if you ever play like this with adepts, I would just say don't make them. Ever. Like they're they're the biggest piece of shit units you can ever have. You need you one hundred percent need to uh uh like commit to the base. You have to. 
So, if the, the like, and you also should know that he's gonna have an army at his base, obviously. So as soon as you approach his base, like, it's, like we'll, we'll we'll back it up for a second. I'll show you exactly where I think you should have cast your adept shade. Right about now, you should, not because you see his units, but because of where you're located. You're about to run into his natural, and the further out he is, the more likely he'll see you from further away. But right now, you should cast your shade, and the reason why you should cast your shade is because the shade itself, if it's not halted by anything, can go about two screen lengths, okay? About two full screen lengths of distance, which if you look at it right now, the first screen length is to the base of his ramp at his natural, and the second screen length is to the mineral line, like the edge of his gas, and like the, or the edge of his mineral line just like touching the gas. So if you cast a shade right now, those shades would end up actually teleporting into his base at, directly at like the edge of his, his resources. That's exactly where you want to be because it's exactly where you're going to do the most damage. You're going to be starting to pop probe, 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 probe. And then obviously when you cast your shades, you can then run backwards with your adepts themselves so they don't just run into his immortals and fucking and, and other adepts. And you don't want to die, obviously. You don't want to take any fucking damage. But you want to cast your shade at an opportune spot and that like right now would be exactly where it is. So the fact that you shade backwards means that I, I just kind of defeats the purpose of the fact that you made adepts in the first place because these units defensively are fucking garbage. They're so bad. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah. yeah, and if you like look at this guy, look at his uh, look at his door. The only way that this guy could actually block out your uh, like he I look look at his money actually. This is an even bigger one. He doesn't actually have enough money to wall you out right now. So if you actually did send these two adepts into his base like that, you would have actually gotten into his mineral line. And you would have not only scouted that he's going for a really fast charge lot Archon, because he's going really quick Temple Archives, and also he's got Twilight Council, which is definitely a charge lot Archon indicator. But you could have guaranteed killed like five probes or six probes or seven probes if you just focus fired. So that's a huge missed opportunity here if you do go adept. And again, if you want to throw adepts into your build, I'm not going to say it's the worst thing in the world. It's just it's going to make the game a little more complicated. But it, it, but yeah, if you just do the way, it, do it the way we just kind of talked about. If your opponent doesn't respect that uh, that rule of having the probe on the high ground early in the game, and also doesn't have his units further forward to see you coming early, so he can actually react with the probe. If you get into his base, the game literally ends. It just kind of is over. But if you play more, if you play more of the safe route of you just don't make adepts. Uh, do you go stalkers instead? Your uh, your power of your mid game is going to be stronger, just because you you know you have better units to actually fight with, uh, like for early defense, and it's fine. Uh, I mean, you don't have to go depths, but you can if you want to. You could you, you could definitely mix them in if you want to. Yeah, that's it, what a story link might have done well. You're gonna what? Sorry. Yes. Oh, I'm just bad at micro units. I'm head deep, so yeah, 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 for Maybe sure. Yeah, it, it's just like knowing how to do it. It's half the battle though on micro. Like it's it like if you don't know what you're doing, then suddenly that's when shit's really it feels complicated and you're like, wait, what do I do? I don't really like sure I'll do that and it kinda doesn't work and you know things fall apart. Alright, now with your build, okay? So again, I think your third base now in this game specifically, it's very early, very greedy. Uh and it's again this like if your opponent plays like the way you're playing right now, again, now this is similar to what I said earlier, where I was talking about how you could go three gate robo and just do a fucking all in. If you do the timing we're talking about, the like this the seven gate charge lot immortal timing, and then you follow that up into uh, charge the archon immortal with the third base eventually, that two base seven gate timing will kill people who play the way you're playing right now. People who go for fast thirds will die every time. So it's gonna definitely make you have a lot of power in the mid game a lot. Like that. Yeah. yeah. And if if you're here's the crazy thing too, just so you know this, because again we're not gonna really be able to talk about it because we're not seeing it now. But just the concept, if you play against someone who plays greedy, you're gonna run them over. You're just gonna win the game with charge lot uh, immortal pushes on two bases uh, before you even go for a third base into immort into archons. But if your opponent does the same thing you're doing, where you both go. If you're both going fucking charge lot uh, immortal pushes, the perfect way to counter that fast and become the more the one who's more efficient, make your gas the second you see you're both doing it, keep pumping out zealots as fast as you can, 
keep making immortals. Like, just keep making an army because you're both trying to kill each other at this point. But immediately make your gases at your natural and go into a Templar Archives before you, t you take a third base. Because if you start adding, and maybe add on one more gateway, so you can go to an even number of eight gateways. And what you can do then is you can then switch. You can still make zealots, 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 zealots. But then as soon as you start making archons, it's going to deplete your gas. Because you're going to have more of it too because you take your gas really fast at your natural. And as soon as you start making early archons, it's going to pace you to that point where you're going to have faster archons than you normally would have. So it's going to make it easier to not die to the all-in. But you can then also afford to squeeze in a third at that point because archons are super mineral cheap. And then you go into three base archon immortal charge lot. So that's how you'd want to. That's how you'd want to do it if you're both owning each other, uh, which is very possible. And no matter what style you do, I would say the perfect time to build a forge as well, which is going to be an important aspect of this as well. No matter if it's an, if you're killing your opponent or whatever, or if you're the one having to do the thing I said where you're going defensively into Archons and then go into your third, because you're both trying to kill each other. No matter what happens, do not take your Forge until your third base has been started. And then you take your Forge. So you always go Forge after third. Because okay. it'll just give you a better transition into macro. It will make you less all in the all-in territory. And if you're going to kill him, you're going to kill him with or without the forge. It's not, it's not really going to make the difference if you have it or not. Alright. So yeah, like if you were doing that timing we talked about this game, you would be killing this guy. He, like he's going for third just like you are and he's also doing it blind. So. Because you're the one who's actually scouting at least, so yeah. Uh, you are, you actually though, like I, I would say, you don't, if you, if you were, so this is a big thing too. That I just noticed about how you play, and I want to make sure you know this. Don't ever scout with the adept, okay? Don't like use that to attack probes and indirectly scout because you're killing probes if you if that's what you're gonna do with it. But don't ever just use the adept to be a scout. Do not ever do that. Use the sentry to scout if you're gonna just make a scouting unit. That's why you make the sentry. Uh, so yeah, like don't ever be like the guy who makes a, a sentry and then you also make an adept to scout. Like stop doing that if that's what you do. And what you're going to do with this build as well is I, what I want you to do is I want you to make uh, a sentry and a stalker at first. And then you obviously are going to eventually go into immortals. But I want you to make up to like five stalkers, okay? With the, with your timing. Like initially go to five stalkers uh, off of your first two gases. And then, uh, and then you just make charge lots after that. And then you stop making stalkers altogether. So... Uh, and then all it is then is you just make immortals, uh, zealots, immortals, zealots, immortals, zealots, and then eventually you make archons. If, you know if you know, the game's not over, but five stalkers with the sentry. So you make your first two gateways is sentry stalker, and then you make two more rounds of stalker stalker, and that's it. So you go up to five, and then and then you're good, uh, because you're gonna get a faster charge with this build anyways. So your your zealots become useful really fast. Um, but uh. I, so you, this is just a good indicator as to know where to cut off your stalkers. Because if you do make five stalkers, you're going to be able to defend early blind all-ins really easy. And if you... Uh, the only time I would ever say to go above five stalkers, okay? The only time this ever makes sense is if your opponent is not expanding. And instead of you going for the charge lot immortal build of like the timing on two bases with seven gates. If your opponent is already one base all inning you... Instead, he's just going full-fledged. He's trying to kill you right now on one base. You keep making stalkers the whole time. Okay. And then that's when your chrono boost, instead of going into, like, probes, it goes into, like, more mortals, more stalkers, and shit like that. And then your all-in might... Like, your, your counter move to kill him at that point might become just a pure stalker immortal push. Uh, because your opponent, like, you know, couldn't kill you, and he bled out his whole army on your battery stalker immortal... And now suddenly, now you go push him with that army. So that that's how that would make sense. But if it's a, if it's a game where he expands, definitely go charge lots after like five stalkers. And again, if if what I'm saying too, if it goes in one ear out the other, because you're like, God damn, this is so much at once. I'll still make that reference build for you after this, so you still kind of have an idea of what we're talking about. And the way you're pacing your your fourth, I don't mind it honestly. If you're gonna go for like at this point, if you were if you were going charge the arc on immortal and now. I'd be like, yeah, it's fine. Like, go for a fourth. Be greedy as fuck. Go for it. Be crazy. Uh, 
and then you would now be dedicating all of your Chrono Boost to Robo Forge, Robo Forge, Robo Forge, uh, because you would already have charge, and you'd be wanting to just have as many immortals as possible, and you'd want to have your you know a plus two early, maybe plus three early weapons as fast as you can possibly get it. So there's only one robo, but you can't do shit. Yes, yeah, so only one robo. Like you're literally, I would say you can make a second robo once you're done making probes. If you actually get to a point where you have four bases with like 80 probes, yeah, you can throw down a second robo. Then that's fine. But up until that point, just do not make a second robo. It's too expensive. Okay. Just be active at using the first robo, so that you're not like neglecting it, and you'll still be great. Okay. <coughs> And then a great trick to do as well, once you're on, once you make that like second robo, and when you're on like four bases, make a dark shrine as well. And also make once you're done saturating and you're about ready to move out and attack him, also make cannon battery at every base. Like one cannon, one battery. And what you can what you can do is it gives you the option to be able to not only warp in units to defend a base, it gives you detection at every base. And you can also if it if it looks like something where you're like, holy shit, that's like a lot of zealots or it's like a lot of units, or it's DTs. You always have the option to warp in defensive DTs if it comes to that. And you can also surround your cannon with defensive DT, uh, a defensive DT warp in. For, like, let me give you for instance, okay? This is a for instance. And this is very realistic as is something I guarantee will happen to you at some point. Let's say you're killing his base, okay? Like your whole army is over at his base for the most part, and he has a fucking massive zealot wave counterattacking you. We're talking like 30 zealots or like 25 zealots. It's a shitload. And you're like, oh god, that's a lot of zealots. And what you what you do is you have a cannon and a battery in one mineral line. But that's going to get overpowered easy by like 30, 25 zealots or something. You could warp in like 8 DTs in a circle right around your, your cannon. Doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as you're reducing a lot of the surface area on the cannon, it's going to make it really easy for the battery to heal the cannon so the cannon doesn't die. And those DTs are just going to fucking destroy the zealots. And you can warp in like 8 DTs to kill like 25 zealots. And zealots and DTs are the same supply. So it's like 16 supply killing like 50 supply. Which is very practical. And if your opponent doesn't react to that, because let's say it turns, it's something that's becoming like more of a, maybe like a base trade where you're also attacking him and he doesn't have the foresight to like react to the zealots. Because in his mind, he's like, all right, I'm going to just make these zealots go kill bases and I'm going to defend my base at the same time. Those DTs will fucking clean up everything so hard. So it's really nice to give yourself the tool to be able to do that. Mineral field depleted. <laughs> yeah, and like right now, if you're going charge the Archon Immortal, I would say you have probably too many stalkers at this point for PvP. If it's like a standard macro game like this. The more stalkers you have, the weaker your composition is, because look what they're doing to you right now. They're path blocking the shit out of your Archons. And Stalker DPS is actually not the greatest in PvP. It's it's good early because it's versatile. But it, as soon as you have access to charge lots, a charge lot is actually more value than a Stalker. Uh, it, for this kind of a comp. So that's why, if you're going to go for faster charge lots, that's why, that is why I'm telling you to not go to like 14 Stalkers or something and instead stop at like 5. The only time it would ever make sense to keep making stalkers in the late game like this is if you got blink and you were worried about like he was going for air units now and you were like shit okay I need to add in stalkers instead of zealots now because like zealots are just gonna like not even be able to hit his air units and I'm worried about dying to the air units. Like but you should also feel okay that you can make zealots just go kill his economy. That is that is I'm actually gonna say that right now really fast because that is something that nobody thinks about that when they're in like diamond I swear. Nobody understands the concept, or most people don't understand the concept of if you make a melee unit that cannot attack air and your opponent is going air, they're like, well, that's just stupid because I can't attack air. But you can kill his economy, and if you kill someone's economy when they're going air, you make his air very weak because he can't afford air anymore. Air, no matter what race you play, air is fucking expensive. So if you kill their bases, like their, their, their income, because workers are all ground units. Suddenly, air becomes really weak because you can't afford to make any more of it. So that, that is always an option, too, where if you're like, well, I have a bunch of zealots and he's got air units. Shit. I'll just go kill his economy. You don't have to necessarily kill his economy where his air is defending, but maybe, like, pull him to one side of his base with some of your units 
once he gets there, send a bunch of your melee units that are ground, like zealots, into his economy on the other side. And if you overpower a base because of that, because you now pull them out of position and then kill his economy over there, wherever it is, it, now he's like, well, fuck, my income is now really low and I'm going air and I now I can't afford shit. Like, it definitely, you definitely will kill them that way really hard. So it is always an option too, but... If you're trying to kill the air units, obviously, if you have, like, blink stalkers at this point, that would definitely be good. If you have, like, 30 blink stalkers versus, like, four carriers, obviously, for 30 blink stalkers are going to crush that. Mineral field okay. It's just options is what I'm trying to make you understand. Yeah, that makes sense. I definitely would just keep blink stalkers usually, so... Yeah. I was trying to switch into red bots. Oh, it, it, like, you can still go stalkers, but just know that if you go stalkers, you have to kill his army. If you go Zealots, it gives you the option to kill his economy. The only time you should ever kill his economy with Stalker is, like, instead of killing the probes, maybe instead you want to kill the Nexus. Like, try and, like, pull him out of position some way again and snipe the Nexus and then blink away. But it's going to take longer to kill a Nexus than it will be to kill probes with Zealots. Like, Zealots are going to get the job done faster because they just, they get in there quicker and they just, like, spread out DPS faster. Uh, but there are, again, there are options in every way. You can do a lot of different things in this game. And now at this point, I would say, uh, definitely want you to be a little bit faster now about how you're taking an attack. Like you look like you're gonna go scout the map, which I'm really happy about. I'm glad you're doing this, but you should already be like moving your army across the map right now. Uh, just because you're having the common problem of you're scouting when you're already maxed. You should be scouting before you max. Uh, yeah, and then because you don't want to, you don't want to give your opponent more time to catch you. And I'm, I'm glad you're actually p you're posturing across the map now. That makes me happy. And then at this point, too, production-wise, uh, you definitely want to be... Uh, okay, you're, you are making units again now. I was going to say, you definitely want to be cranking out your units. You could... Now, now that you're Diamond League, I mean, I don't know if you're going for more of like... This definitely looks more like Vita GM-esque here. Uh, uh, but... Yeah. At this point now, definitely don't like this is now since it's diamond, it's gonna only get more hard from here. Try to be in the habit of giving yourself good concaves. So what would be the perfect way to have taken this fight? I like how it started. Okay, and the reason why the reason the reason why I like how it started is because you popped his fucking disruptors. Like wa watch how the fight starts for a second. So you get in here and you catch him with disruptors in the open. You pop a disruptor, you pop another disruptor. But now I don't like this anymore for you because he has the concave to your convex. Like he has more, if this guy moved his army, he would have more surface area than you have. And the reason why is because you're fighting in a tiny ass choke point. So the way you could have taken this fight, that would have been amazing. Would have been because you're fighting in a choke point now. If you just backed up just a little bit to where your units could be the ones in the massive concave behind where you are. And you make him stand in the choke point here. If you did that, it just so you back up for all of like probably two seconds, or maybe three seconds. If you do that, you actually would take a much better fight because look at the backline of your army. Watch the backline of your army. Some of them do actually shoot zealots, which is nice. But as soon as the zealots are dead, all of these units in the back just kind of like roam around doing nothing. And here's another thing too. If you you actually I would say this, you were a little bit more fortunate that you made stalkers with this army and you took a fight in this choke point. If you make zealots though, like we're talking about in the future, and instead of having a bunch of zealots, you know, being able to engage properly, if these were zealots stuck behind immortals and archons as well, like some of them go in front and die, and some of them are stuck behind your 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 backline DPS, that's gonna lose you the game so many times. Because you have a bunch of zealots that are like, I'm supposed to be in there. Taking damage for you know for the other units so that they don't die and I die, and then said they're just waiting until units in the front line die, which are your front line is actually your immortal archon and your back line is your zealots. That's gonna lose you the game all the time. So if you take fights like this and choke points, you'll always have that problem. Uh, so definitely get out of the habit of letting your army take the convex to the, your opponent's concave. Like always be the one with the concave. If you can just manage to do that, your chances of winning fights in general go up in every matchup. Uh, all the time. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I was 
wasn't sure why I lost this fight. So. I'm gonna tell you right now, honestly, this fight you would have lost. You would have lost the fight because of positioning if you had charge lots. This fight wasn't actually entirely lost because of positioning. Uh, like a part of it was, but it wasn't the bigger part because you had stalkers and most of your stalkers had uptime because you were killing zealots that charged into your face. But the reason why you really lost this fight is because you, your army distribution wise, had like thirty percent of your army was stalkers here, roughly I would say, and like. 5% of your opponent's army was stalkers. And you had like no charge lots, and your opponent has a fuckload of charge lots. Charge lots are way better than stalkers here, and the reason why is because charge lots take no damage versus immortals, really. They make immortals do fucking nothing. They're just damage sponges to immortals. They, they, they get owned by archons, but archons are more frontline than immortals are. Immortals are always going to be in the back. So what happens is, is if you have a good enough like setup, if your front line can, if you if you are both if, if you both have archons and you both wipe out each other's zealots to a certain degree, and then the archons start dying, if you can ever have a little bit of zealots left over, like if you, like if, for instance, like another zealot uh, warping happens with a prism or some something, and you send in another wave of zealots, if you can actually get to a point where the archons have died, and now it's just immortal shooting zealots again. The immortals are going to... Like, immortals get countered by zealots fucking really hard, is my point I'm trying to make here. Like, they don't do any damage. It, it wastes their time, and they're always going to shoot the zealots first, because zealots are melee. So as long as there can be zealot uptime, it's really, really, really good for immortals to do, to do no damage. And the other reason why uh, zealots are better than stalkers once it gets to this stage, DPS of a zealot is bigger than the DPS of a stalker. A zealot attacks faster than a stalker, substantially, and it... As long as it's not dead, it actually does more DPS if it is able to connect for a few seconds. Uh, okay. So, so stalkers just don't put enough output basically in your, it overall, which is why stalkers pair better with something like disruptors because you're then it comes down to like mobility and you just like poke him, blink away, and blow him up with the disruptors. And then it doesn't matter if stalkers don't do amazing DPS because they're high mobility. That that's where like stalkers shine. But it would, in a composition like Charge Arc and Immortal, if you also have a fuckload of stalkers, all they do is they create a bigger, uh, bigger uh, surface area that you need for your concave. So they block; they have a higher chance to block your immortals and your archons, and then they don't actually add a lot of DPS to your army for a supply that they cost. Okay, that's all you know. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah. Now I am at, yeah, I was going to say, like, I feel like if he just continues to warp in on you, he might. This is that moment where, this is the, this is the problem, okay? You, I'm going to say this, and th this is the final concept of PvP that, that you need to really understand. You're, the win condition of PvP is not by having the same army the whole game, okay? It's not by going, okay, every fight, I'm going to have charge lot, archon, immortal. That's what I'm going for every fight. That's always what I want to have. You actually, what you really want to have is you want to have Archon Immortal. That's it. You want to actually get to a point where you have pure Archon Immortal. And then you're, then that's like, holy fuck, my army is like so strong. Zealots are only made because you can't afford to make charge... Or sorry, Zealots are only made because you can't make Archon Immortal the whole time because it's too expensive. So Zealots are like the filler, basically. Like they're like, well, I don't have any gas because... Archons are extremely expensive on gas, and Immortals are somewhat expensive on gas. And I only have like 200 gas right now, and I already am making Immortals, and I can't afford to make any more Archons. Like, I'm just broke. Then they go, well, I'll make Zealots. Zealots will basically be the mineral investment that keeps my Archon Immortal alive. And ideally what you want to do is, every time you take a fight, if you can, try your best to disengage the fight. If you're not going to win the fight and your zealots are bleeding out. Like, if you can kill his zealots, there's no way you can get run down, essentially. If, you, if you're both going charge the Archon Immortal, and you both, like, bleed out each other's zealots, or, if, for instance, if your zealots are bleeding out a little bit faster than his, the proper way to micro that and get the fuck out of there would be maybe to start running away as your zealots are almost dead. And as his, his zealots are going to charge your ass, like, they're, they have just faster overall move speed than his Archons and his Immortals. If you just start disengaging early... His zealots will get in your face repeatedly really fast, and maybe you just stutter step once or twice with your army. Uh, and, like, you know, run away from his Archon Immortal, but, like, just kill his zealots and just keep running away. Like, disengage that shit. And if he keeps chasing you, 
you can re-engage when you are the one with his zealot advantage. Like, you're the one now with 20 zealots to maybe his, like, four. Now you re-engage, and suddenly you just start overwhelming his archons and killing them. But as long as you can kind of, like, keep a high archon count, you can always control the zealots. But if your archon count starts getting depleted because you let them die in fights over and over, that is the lose condition of this game, of PvP. Because now, if you don't have a good archon count, that's when zealots become a problem. Like, zealots will run you over. So you want to retain a high zealot count. Because zealots are supposed to not be a problem. Like, the more archons you have, the more archons you have that can... Because, like, like, it's not just... Here, here's the best way to describe this, okay? I really want you to understand this concept because it's so fucking important. Like, this is the key to PvP uh, for the majority of the games you're going to play. An archon can stand behind an archon and it can still shoot a zealot. It's, it's got enough range to do that. So you can have two layers of archons killing zealots. And also, archons do splash damage... And Archons, like, and they do a lot of fucking splash damage. Like, if you can get a good blob of Zealots together, Archons do amazing splash damage. So if you think about it, if your engagements look more flatline or they're convexy, that's, I don't know, that's not really a word, but you get what I mean. If, you're, if, you're, uh, yeah. if your engagement looks like a frowny face, okay, <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> not going to be good for you because what's going to happen is the Zealots are going to spread out all over you. And they're going to surround you and they're going to kill you. But if you can make the concave with Archons, and you can make Zealots run into the semicircle, like he's the one with the convex and he runs into you already surrounding him, what happens is his Zealots clump harder and you AoE them better. You actually do, and anyone who doesn't know what AoE means, it's area of effect. Archons get better splash because instead of Zealots spreading out on a, on a convex, they clump up into a concave against your concave so they, they get like it's like a wall like surrounding them almost and then they just run in and get surrounded by archons and some mostly die so if you can maintain enough archons to, to do this you that's you just win the game it's over because his zealot front line just depletes so fucking fast and it's like well i lost two archons and you lost 30 zealots that's legit what it will be like if you if your opponent's still going mass zealots when you get to that stage and your supply will be if you're both 200 the fight will go from you being 200 to him being 200 to now he's at like 130 and you're like at 190. Like legit, that's how it'll feel like. Uh, so mass Archons and Immortals are definitely the win condition. So try your best to not just repeatedly lose your Archon Immortal if you can help it. Always feel free to disengage if you're losing the fight. Uh, try your best to not ever get overpowered uh, in that way. Don't just be like, well, Zealots are bleeding out. He's got more Archon Immortal than me. He's warping a new Zealots. Let's just keep standing here and I'm dead. Like, that always feel free to disengage before you actually have that critical mass of Archons. Because that is why you're dying right now. You're, you've lost the, the Archon momentum swing, and he just wiped out all of your Zealot reinforcements because he has more Archon than you. Uh, and, like, your next Zealot wave again is going to... Like, watch how fast your Zealots are going to die. He has seven... Or, sorry, he has six Archons that we can see so far. Your zealots are going to just fucking evaporate. Uh, to overpower an Archon, you want to have probably like three times the number, realistically. So if he has six Archon, you'd want to have like 18 zealots to have a chance there. If he has 10 Archons, you'd want to have like fucking 30 zealots that's realistically there. Like that's, that, that's like a rough estimate of what feels good. And if you can somehow make more than that, if you have like five times the amount, you're going to definitely overwhelm him. If you, but if you have like less than three times, Archons start becoming a problem. If you have like 2 to 1 or 1 to 1, your Zealots are just going to walk over there and just insta-die. So look how fast your Zealots just die. They're all dead, and the Immortal doesn't even die. Yeah, yeah then making Stalkers at this point is definitely like you've just lost the game. Because yeah, Stalkers are just fucking awful here. It's just, you never want to lose the advantage of, like, the momentum swing. And then here's the final thing, okay? Here's the final thing. If you're in a position, if you are in a position where you're like, well, fuck, okay, I'm actually going to die if the game keeps going at the pace it is. If it, if it keeps going down the path it's already going, I'm just going to die. The only way you can win here at this point now is one of two ways, which is either a tech swap or economy harassment. Because if you just if you're behind and you know you're gonna get overpowered and overpowered and overpowered, and you're gonna die. If you swap into something else, like maybe you swap into disruptors yourself, or and you maybe go for like those fat, juicy disruptor shots, 
or you swap into like air and maybe you start going into like carriers or something if you do a tech swap you have a higher chance of winning other than just like making the same composition and eventually dying to it uh than he is because he just has more than you or either that or if you launch maybe some like run buys where like let's say you warp in one round of zealots and you uh you defend your base behind like gateways or some shit kind of like at your natural but then you do run buys in his base and you try to like just kill undefended bases if you're behind that's probably the only way you're going to come back and like maybe you warp in dts in his base with the prism and you just start make, making a real messy problem for his ass and you or you could be like i'm going to kill your observer and maybe make dts myself and try to defend my base with dts while i have dts in your base like something needs to happen that's like drastic if you're in a position like you're in now to have a chance to win because if you just like i said before if you just keep making like charge the arc on immortal and he has like eight immortals and like nine archons and you have two immortals and like two archons and you're just trying to like fight him off you're gonna lose every time because you need time to not die there because you like you need the amount of time to be able to build up your archon immortal count to not be dead and he's not giving it to you because he's killing your expansions right now so you're gonna die Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Alright, and then yeah, so that's game is definitely over right now. So we can uh we can hop out of this and uh I feel like a lot of what we just talked about makes you know, a lot of it is applies to overall gameplay of PvP. But the final thing I want to do for you before we wrap it up is I'll really quickly go through the build where I will uh, I will set up what I want you to do, which is the two base timing. And then this will be the build where if you win the game here, you win the game. If you don't win the game here, you go back. You still make Oracle. You, uh, sorry, you still make Zealot Immortal a lot as often as you can. But you then add in a third base and add in Archon with more gas and you just go into just like you did just, just now in that game right there where you're going charge Archon Immortal, you're expanding to a third and then a fourth base. It turns into that if you don't kill them with the two-base timing. But I really do feel like you're, you're going to kill most Brodos with the two-base timing. Uh, all right, so I am going to really quickly go into... Uh, okay, my shit's like bugged. There we go. Uh, I'm going to invite you to a game and I'll have you just spectate so you can... Uh, or actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this up to you. What what would you rather do? Would you rather spectate this and just see how I do it, or would you rather play against me and see what it feels like to play against it? And then you can also watch my perspective in a replay. Uh, yeah, I'll play against it. And, uh, okay. I'll watch the replay after. Sure. That good. Yeah, this, and just make sure you save it so you just have access to it all the time. So for this, okay. then uh, we'll 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 wrap it up after this is over, and I'll just do a final like you know if you have any questions, I'll answer it for you, but. I will probably won't talk to you anymore throughout the game just because I don't want to distract you. I want you try your best to you know play PvP. Like uh, you can even try to do what we just talked about and try to do it yourself right now. But I'll give you a, a efficient version of what this build should be, and you'll see what it feels like. And then if I don't kill you with it, you'll see what a transition would look like. But again, it's just going to be I don't make Archon until I go for a third base and all that stuff. All right, are you ready? Yep. All right. Good luck, man. All right, guys. I muted my mic on Discord, so uh, here we go, dude. This is now only the VOD can hear me. Only the YouTube people can hear me now. Mr. J. Paulson cannot hear me anymore. All right, guys. I think he will probably die to the timing. The timing is fucking strong. Uh, this is a timing that I almost started doing myself in PvP, like for a while. I was going to become a player like this, but. I, you know, I, I never, I didn't really go down the path of this kind of a player because it's it not how I prefer to play myself. I like Stalker Disruptor a lot. So it's, it's, that shit's really fun. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be, we'll see how he goes. So again, the build for us this game is going to be five stalker sentry with a safe expand, and we're going to go into a charge lot timing with a prism and immortals, and it's going to be like probably one or two immortals with just charge lots, charge lots, charge lots, 
And then if we don't kill him with that, we'll go into a forge, a Templar Archives, and a third base, and we'll go into a actual third base. Okay, he's got double gateway. Nice, double chronoed. Good shit. Okay, so he made a nexus before he made a. That's a really early Nexus, so he definitely made that pretty fast. I feel like he probably cut something out of his, like maybe he didn't make gateway units or something. Because that's a fucking fast Nexus. And But now that I know he's making a Nexus, we'll just go back into making probes ourself. Uh, for the, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be the, on the greedier side to get this timing set up now. Like we don't need to make a battery as fast now because we're not worried about being pressured. That Nexus early is definitely uh, pretty big. We can even go back to Colonel Wasting Probes now too. So this is how you should react to people, uh, Paul, Mr. Paulson, if when, when you play yourself. If you see someone who goes for a really greedy, or like you're like, I'm playing safe and my opponent's playing really greedy. He went Nexus before I did. This is when you can play, like you can go allocate Chrono Boosts Chrono Boost back into your your Nexus and you can delay your, your tech just for a moment because you're going to be able to afford more to get here. You're still going to take your tech relatively fast because this is a timing, but you're, you can not rush the tech and cut probes is what I'm saying. And like, for instance, now that we're actually getting to that point where we're getting ready to, uh, you know, like we're still able to maintain pro production and we're still going here. I'm now going to start my tech. You build the buildings about the same time too, because this is not just going to be charge lots, but you do want charge early. It's also going to be immortals. So, uh, you're going to be making both teching, uh, making both tech around the same time. And you're going to stop making probes around 16. <coughs> Okay, now I'd say we can make a battery because we haven't seen him for a while. And uh, just to be safe, you know, we'll make the battery now. Because you never know what your opponent's capable of all the time. Okay, so we now have four more probes in production. We're done making probes now. Now it turns into uh, two more stalkers and then just gates, 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 gates. Okay, you have gas, stalkers. You, looks like you have the same shit I do. It's fine. Start making immortals. And start chrono boosting out your mortals. Only chrono boost the, the, the robo now. And go gateway, gateway. Start making zealots. Let's chrono boost another mortal really fast because it's about to finish. We're going to make two mortals with this timing and then that's it. Two mortal, then prism, then we go. Okay, go ahead and chrono boost it again. Let's make another, like... Uh, we have four gates right now, so now we have five. Let's go to seven gates. Six. Seven. And then make another, like, another pylon. Maybe make another pylon, because we're going to supply block pretty fast now. With this, this is a lot of production. And now let's make a prism. Really quick. And Chrono Boost it again. Start making zealots again. And as soon as that prism spawns, we walk across the map. Make another pylon, make maybe another pylon. We really don't want a supply block here. Because our production is about to ramp up ridiculously fast now. And see how charged, even though we didn't chrono it, it's going to be done with the prism. Now let's make an observer behind the prism, and now let's go across the map. Let's start walking across the map and make a few zealots here again. Okay. We can make a few more zealots, whatever. And now this timing is designed to fucking kill. Let's grab this, make another immortal. 
And now let's just rally the Immortals to here. Because you're still going to make Immortals, but you're not going to bring them across the map for this unless you feel like you're winning the fight, like hardcore. Maybe make one more pylon and then we're done. Now, phase Prism right here. I'm not going to tell you to do Prism Micro because it's really fucking hard and it's, it's going to probably lose the Prism. Just know that Zilla Weapons are your priority right now and just go. And you can like move your army forward. Maybe like Force Field if he runs up the ramp. Keep making Zealots though. That's the priority. Maybe, like do a Force Field right there or something. They can kill that battery because it's exposed and it's healing a lot. Keep making Zealots. Do like another Force Field. Whatever. Keep making Zealots. Like this timing is fucking strong. If you, all you gotta do is keep making Zealots. Just keep making Zealots. And if you don't kill them... And so if you, if you notice it's going like this, you can bring your mortals across the map and be like, Cool, let's just bring them now, because I'm winning the fight. Like as soon as you start breaking the probe line, you know you're winning the fight. And it's, it's pretty obvious when you can tell you're winning the fight. But you just keep power, you just keep piling the pressure on, like literally never stop making zealots. And you can go back to your base as well and go like this. Hold shift, chrono, like select nexus, hit chrono, hold shift, click, 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 click. Do all your fucking gates at this point now, because zealots are with their priority now, because you're, you're piling the pressure on, so you can make more zealots faster, and faster, and faster, and faster. GG. Alright. Now, I'll resume the game just for a second. Uh, I'm gonna unmute my mic. Oh, okay, so now uh, watch my stream for just a second for the, this last part, uh, and then we'll just assume now I didn't kill you with this, okay? So you can see this timing is fucking annoying to deal with. It's pretty good, fucking strong, but if you don't win the fight there, let's just say like it's kind of like bleeding out and your opponent's not really breaking. The way you'd play it is you would back off, you would resume pro production, you would go back to chrono boosting your nexus if you if you feel okay to do that. You would take your gas. You would take your third base. You can also, if you feel like you're not going to win the fight, but you're still pressing a little bit more and you want to be safe about it, you can skip for zealots in a warpin and you can just make a third. If you if you feel like, for instance, if you're like, I want to pressure you right now, but I don't, I'm not trying to kill you because I feel like I'm probably not going to. It's a, it's a judgment call, really, when you have to do that. But you can always throw that third down too. It's just going to weaken your pressure a little bit because you're going to skip for zealots. But So it's going to like guarantee you're not going to break them probably. But as soon as you start in the third base, you, again, you keep making probes. You have a Temple Archives, you have a Forge, and you, you keep making Zealots, you keep making uh, keep making Zealots, keep making Immortals. Saturate your gas, and your money's going to feel really thin for a little while, because you're, you're adding in the, the third base. Your, ma your main base is probably starting to mine out. You can start getting ready to saturate your probes on your third, like transfer and shit like that, re-rally. But now, at this point, if your Prism is still active, uh, if it's not dead... You always have the option to do like counter pressure if you need time, but realistically, it's mostly just about making new units at your base, and then once your uh, whatever it's called is done, your you know your temple archives is done, you just switch into a heavy uh, archon style with zealots, and you, again you stop chrono boosting immortals, and you start chrono boosting or sorry you stop chrono boosting uh, probes now as soon as your your temple archives is done. And you just go back, because then your third base is going to be really fully saturated. Uh, and then you just go to start chrono boosting out your upgrades and your mortals again. So you can throw, like, basically what I'm saying is, is you're chrono boosting immortals the whole time once you have the robo for the timing. If you switch into a third base, you can do, like, maybe one round of chrono to saturate the third fast. But it's not going to take very long, because you're also transferring probes. But then as soon as the third looks like this, go right go right back into chrono boosting your forge and your, uh, your uh, mortals again. And now, at this point, too, you can do something like take your fourth base. And like this is where it goes back into the game you were just playing a second ago. Where it's like, cool, yep, it's the same thing I just played. Where I'm, now I'm going for like the four base charge Lark on Immortal style. And it's all good. And you just play it, you know, from, from this way, right here. And that's pretty much the whole thing, man. Uh, I guarantee. What the hell? I just killed one of my probes. I guarantee you're going to win most of your games on that timing. That timing is so fucking strong. Just know the big one. Take your third and then take your tech. Take your third first. Always do that. Don't be the guy that sits on two bases and you're like, fuck, he's not going to die. Uh, you know, and like, let's say he's macroing. He's not owning you. And you're like, you know, I'm going to take this tech anyways. If you do that and you start making a bunch of like your, your upgrades and you're chrono boosting your robo still and you're going temple archives. This is mining out and you haven't even started a third yet. 
you're going to fall so far behind in a macro game if that's what your opponent's doing. So you need to understand the difference of like all in and macro and it's really the I'm going to tell you right now the only way your opponent's going to not die to this timing if you do it pretty decently is if they're probably all inning you. Because you're never going to be like, "You know what? I'm just going to go for a greedy third and I'm also going to just shove like just completely shit on your timing." That's not realistic. Like seven gates is not going to just get shut down by like two gates and a third base. That, that's never going to happen. Uh, the only the only way that could ever possibly happen is if like he went two gate disruptor and he just somehow hits like fat like ten fucking units die. You're like wow okay, I just lost like my whole army to a disruptor. Maybe then yeah, but otherwise no. All right, man. Do you have any other questions about anything? Does anything not making sense? Or how do you feel? Uh, good. Yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, I Thank you. All right, dude. Well, thank you again for doing a coaching lesson. I will have the VOD on uh, on YouTube uh, by tomorrow, and I'll, I'll send you a message on Discord again by probably tomorrow, uh, linking you to the VOD so you can easily go back and watch this again and again as many times as you want. But, uh, awesome. yeah, thank man. dude, thank you. Have a good rest of your day, and uh, appreciate it, man. Yeah, you too. Also, wait, wait awesome. be before we leave, last thing, if you didn't do it yet, make sure you go to replays, your, your own replay folder, and save that replay. Actually, you know what? I'm going to send it to you. You know, the reason why is because uh, just, in, just in case you want a, a, my reference. I mean, I, I guess it doesn't, you can save yours. It doesn't really matter. I kind of like went lazy on the follow-up because you don't have the follow-up. But as long as you understand the follow-up is all I'm trying to say. My fo I'm not, I don't really need to send you the replay. My, my follow-up is fucking really bad uh, in terms of how I didn't do it as, as efficiently as I could have. I was like talking and like waiting until I had like 1,200 minerals to spend my money. But uh, so that's not a really good example. But uh, but up to the timing, the, the timing when I hit you, that is a good build. That build will carry you in so many games. Uh, and, and yeah, just don't just like you're gonna get, basically what I feel like is gonna happen in PvP for you is you're gonna win if you do that timing really well. You're gonna win so many fucking times with that timing. I just don't want you to forget how to follow it up. That's legit. What I think will be your problem. All right, dude. T uh, all right. Take it easy. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you, and uh, I'll catch you next time, man. All right. Thanks. You too. Thanks, you. All right, guys. There you go. There's been a coaching lesson. Uh, yeah. I, I don't need to send him this replay. This replay is fucking. I I, I like fuck was AFK half the time after he left, and I was just talking. Uh, but yo, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh the replay analysis or the the coaching lesson rather. Uh, put Protoss players out there. I hope this gives you, some, gives you some ideas on how to play some PvP. Uh, that timing is definitely fucking strong. I ran, I would say that timing was uh, probably the easiest way to gain a lot of power in the matchup and really kind of start to understand how to play the matchup. I went, I literally myself went through a phase where I did that timing, and then I realized I don't like it as much as I like playing fancy Blink Stalker Disruptor. <laughs> but Blink Stalker Disruptor is really hard, so I don't recommend learning that right away. That style teaches you how to just control the matchup, and it's because you, you get like a lot of experience to like playing it out repeatedly. But thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, go check out more if you're interested. And uh, yeah, good luck, guys. Peace. Take it easy. <laughs>